when we go into our breakout sessions, um, Trina will just be sitting at a table back there, and you know, please feel free to talk with her and uh, hear more about it and how the projects could integrate possibly. So I think at this point, um, in the interest of time, we're going to start going through some of these proposal summaries. They're going to be very brief. Um, it's just to get you an, I give you an idea of all the projects that came in. Um, and then during our breakout session, we can ask, a, ask questions and talk. So, Chris, do you want to start off? unrelated 
to me, but they are all under the guise of Sierra County roads. So it had to do with fixing some tanks, um, drilling some common wells to reduce all the need for a lot of individual, additional individual groundwater wells to go in, um, fixing some of the community water systems that are. So, sorry, new. Not haven't had a chance to talk to Tim about this one, so I don't. Um, I don't know how those are all related to roads, but somehow, in his mind, at least they are. Um, the Sierra Valley RCD would like to update their resource management plan, and that has to do with everything that the RCD is going to be doing in the upcoming, I would guess, like three-year period. I don't know, Jim, if you know the answer to that, but um, so... I made an assumption that soils and fencing and things that the landowners in the valley would want to do would be included in that plan, but it also has to do with their budget and how they're going to operate and how things within the plan <coughs> get updated. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pretty well trained monkeys. Weather stations. So um, installing weather stations in all the major valleys that would be online accessible um, and would show everything from soil moisture to you know, what the weather is doing, how much um, precipitation we're getting, wind speed, etc. Yes? Would it be using the wind measuring for bigger than that? No. Fortunately, Willow was directly in my line of sight while I was looking at you, and I didn't hear she hit her head like, no.
watershed monitoring program. And this is uh, so we were kind of work, a lot of those projects were in the Eleanor um, area. This is a region wide proposal um, that's being put out there um, to actually do uh, recognizing that we need some region wide monitoring in terms of stream flow and stuff, and then also a central database for that. So that's what. This is a large project. Um, I'm not sure how I got into this work group. I don't. It's kind of irrelevant at this point. <laughs> um, but it's uh, being put in um, as a lidar, which is a really, um, uh, what should I say, a really um, high resolution. But I guess high resolution would be a good word. But anyway, it's a very sensitive technique. Lidar is for actually getting at vegetation, at looking at all kinds of terrain. And so there's been some LIDAR work before services done it in, um, in and around Plumas County. Uh, but this would expand on this and actually make it um, throughout the whole Upper Feather River region. Um, it would be a pretty extensive project, you know, coming in at you know, several million dollars. But very collaborative. Uh, the data that would be generated from something like this would actually be useful for probably just about any group in here. So. But looking very big on this one, some of the region-wide project. Um, Spanish Creek restoration, um, landowners kind of drove this one and it was put in by Plymouth County Department of Works, but it's recognizing that um, some of the historic hydraulic mining that's gone on has created a lot of um, uh, gravel buildup all the way down into American Valley area and that's causing a lot of creek um, erosion and sedimentation issues. And so they would like to put in a small implementation project to actually start to deal with that gravel um, at the head of American Valley. And the Plumas River water course, um, Plumas to the Pacific. Um, this has been going on for about 12 years. This is the program that Rob Wade has been very instrumental with. If any of you have sixth graders, they've probably been through this program, but it's a region-wide program. Uh, they're always looking for different ways to integrate with groups and seek funding, but also, I think, you know, recognizing that educating the kids um, as a huge part of the future of our watershed and stewardship, so we wanted to include it in the plan as well. Um, advancing watershed stewardship, out with another education um, <coughs> and outreach uh, proposal, um, and focusing in the Lake Alamore watershed area, okay, um, and looking at non-point source pollution into that area, and how to outreach to folks and get that information out in hopes that that would actually start to change the way we um, do business and maybe clean up the water a little bit. Um, another one, a very similar one, is a runoff and um, nutrient deposition in the Elmer Basin. Um, this one would be um, to actually develop a recommendation, so not so much as an outreach, I'm sure outreach would be a component of it, but it's to actually develop some action plans and again address some of the water quality issues that are you know happening in the Lake Elmore area. Um, restoration of Little Last Chance Lake, which is in the northern part of Sierra Valley. Um, this one was put in recognizing that when uh, Frenchman Dam was put in in the 60s, it altered the course and how water flows into the middle fork in that part of Sierra Valley and that Little Last Chance was actually an area that got water um, traditionally, and so it's about kind of trying to restore that hydrologic function without taking the dam down uh, and, and increasing some of the wetlands in the area. Sierra Valley Meadow Assessment, this is a um, one put in by the RCD, and they um, are recognizing that there's been some assessments throughout the Sierra, in various Sierra Meadows, but they're really looking for something that's very Sierra Valley specific and dealing with the issues that are going on in Sierra Valley. So wanting to update information that they have and gather more scientific information so that they can do long-term planning for the valley. Folky um, Meadow Restoration, this is in the Carmen Valley area near Cal uh, Calpine. And the Forest Service has put, uh, put this in and it's to um, deal with some eroding gullies in that area, um, mainly as a result of an old railroad grade. So they want to proposed a project. So this would be an implementation project, and the planning has already been done. Um, Just a note on that one, it's shown in the wrong place on the map. Oh, okay. On, on this map. <laughs> so we've made a note of that. Okay. Let's see. Um, uh, let's 
see, Feather River Trout Unlimited was a large region-wide uh, project that they put in. They have put in um, several projects here, but really they are looking at expanding their program and you know looking at fisheries and cold water refugia uh, throughout the region. Um, and this specific one, they have identified uh, several projects. Um, their Trout Unlimited and our uh, Trout and Classroom Program, which is existing, but keeping expanding on that. Fish passages, those types of things. It's kind of an all-encompassing type of project. Um, I'm sure they would welcome ideas on that and ways to integrate. Um, and then they also have submitted another one that is climate change effects in the Upper Feather River fit Fisheries. And this would be about developing a predictive tool, modeling tool, for trying to figure out how do you kind of keep, keep ahead of the fish, I guess, and where those cold water refugia might be. So, Mountain Meadows, another fencing project up in Mountain Meadows that was put in by um, the private landowners up there. Um, and this would be putting in about 10 miles of fencing to fence off riparian areas um, and kind of work with changing the grazing management up there. Um, Trout Unlimited uh, also put in one about debris of dams, and this would be a, for phase one of this would be doing a large study um, to just inventory what debris dams we, that are in existence and what their condition is um, from historic mining operations. And then, then the second phase would be actually do you remove some, you know, removal of some of those dams. So that's, and that's
again, limits have, and I have talked about it, and uh, certain management group members have talked to me about it at some point. Uh, they're going to have to wrestle with updating the project list. So that was a big disappointment because we knew Jesse had a lot in mind before he left. He was very active in the work group. Valley, 
and it's looking at the recreational aspects, the fuels reduction aspects. Again, there's a lot of critical habitat around this reservoir for a lot of species. It's looking at that sort of thing, and, and it's tying in with the Forest Service priority watershed system with inside the National Forest. We're trying to work with this. Um, and then Joe has been working with us through the Prop 50 process, and now we're into this uh, potentially Proposition 1 funding cycle, looking at the huge effect that roads have on water quality, intercepting flows, just sort of changing the hydrology. And his project is focused on, again, priority watersheds in the Forest Service where you've got stream crossing issues or erosion issues and conveyance issues, passage issues. And then biomass, of course, is an ongoing struggle for us because a lot of these areas that are high, have high ecological ports don't have a high lot of product, marginal product, to support treatments in those areas. So biomass is a real key part for our water, our group, and because if biomass is included in these projects and we have a source for that biomass, then we can actually treat a lot more of these ecologically sensitive areas in the manner that they need to be treated. So this, this talks about that. And this, again, is tied to meadows, again, and how do you treat the area around the meadow and restore meadow function. And this is another area around um, meadow reservoirs. It's tied into the, a lot of work that other people are doing in the meadows group in that reservoir. And then, again, this is, again, tying the biomass and the harvesting to the restoration of the water body. And that was a... That was a bit of a surprise to me that the work group was so interested in that connection, but it comes up over and over in the projects. And then this is the big one. I was hoping Ryan would make it here. Most of our foresters are at the Society of American Forestry meeting in, in um, Bay in um, Auburn today, but uh, Soper Wheeler w took the lead in helping us develop this region-wide proposal for the whole upper feather forest that include the public lands, the private lands, to look at how we might treat the whole system with the idea that if you would do that, you might have a significant impact on groundwater storage and therefore a significant impact on stream flows and all the other values that people value from this watershed downstream. Okay, so the last thing I want to think in our work group, we came up with a kind of brainstorm some of these projects that might have overlaps and it was the LIDAR project. From the Mighty, which they'll be presenting this, was a Big Springs project, traditional ecological knowledge project. Turner Springs is Boba Portola, municipal project. Um, water system improvement uh, in Quincy, East Quincy, and Quincy includes some timber thinning. And I think that was it. And then some of the Sierra County um, well and uh, projects for fire suppression. So I think that's it. Thank you. So uh, for the title part, okay. Um, so Big Springs is mostly owned by the U.S. Forest Service. This has been something that um, the Mighty Center has talked with the Forest Service about for several years, and so. Um, looking at uh, Aspen regeneration and also Aspen to retain more water and with conifer encroachment um, there's more water capacity and more water absorbing into the soils and less conifer is doing evapotranspiration. Um, there were five projects submitted by the Mitre Summit Consortium and um, the other one is the Med Creek out recovery and Mud Creek flows into Lake Eleanor near Chester and um, there's a, a huge range of biodiversity there or potential biodiversity. Um, there's significant plant, riparian plants and other resources that are invaluable to the mighty people for everything from medicine, basketry and other resources and supporting um, wildlife biodiversity. Humboldt Valley Outdoor Research Learning Center. This is an opportunity uh, to set up a research center that could be used by people internationally for different projects. Um, Humboldt Valley um, is the type, the land transfer is happening right now to the Mighty Summit Consortium from PG&E through the Stewardship Council. And um, it's a great opportunity to work with a lot of different people. The Indian Jim River Resource Center, that's been, the Indian Jim has been um, a source of topic for almost everybody in Plymouth County for years and years and years, what we do with it. 
So this is a plan to be able to use it as a resource center, educational area, um, and try to figure out what to do um, about the asbestos and the other things in the buildings. And then I already talked about this, um, so we don't need to go through that anymore. Um, so the one thing that um, there were the Microsummit Consortium is comprised of nine different organizations in the Feather River watershed, and so the Greenville Rentry and the Susanville Rentry have been attending all the TAC meetings, the Tribal Advisory Committee meetings, and um, the Greenville Rentry really wants to do an educational component, and I know they been in conversation with Trad Unlimited and some other folks, um, but they are um, interested and willing to support different types of projects in the region. So I just wanted to throw that 